Hey everybody, uh, I'm Ben Funk. This is Hot Hardware, but today it's hot music, and this is a hot guitar. Uh, anyway, uh, we're here to talk about what Qualcomm and Steinberg have been working on uh, to bring music production to Windows on ARM. So what I've got right here is a Samsung Galaxy Book 4 Edge. If you haven't seen the review, it's on Hot Hardware. Uh, it's fast. It's got a lot of battery life. Uh, the, the questions that we had at the end were all about the software ecosystem. Would developers get on board uh, the Windows on ARM platform? And that's a question we've been asking for a while. Uh, well, the answer, now that there's some really high performance hardware, appears to be yes. Uh, so this is a much uh, more solid uh, decision. We can definitely recommend this laptop now better than we could back in June. Anyway, uh, alongside it, it is plugged into it is an, a Steinberg IXO uh, two in, two out interface. I've got one channel plugged into a mic that's helping me keep everything in sync. And then I've got my guitar running straight into the interface. On the laptop, we've got running a Windows on ARM preview of uh, Steinberg's Cubase 13 uh, Essentials, I think. Yeah, uh, Cubase Essentials. And um, you can see I've got a couple of plugins running. And you should have some guitar audio if I did all of this correctly. Uh, anyway, so what Steinberg and uh, Qualcomm have gotten together to do is develop low latency audio drivers for Windows on ARM. There are two drivers that we're gonna talk about today. Uh, the first is honestly the most exciting. It's a, a USB class audio driver for the ASIO protocol, A-S-I-O. It's the lowest latency uh, spec for developing uh, sound drivers on Windows. And it's used universally now um, now that, you know, years ago, Avid got on board. Uh, but it's used for every digital audio workstation like Cubase. And it's a class driver, so it works with any USB audio interface. Um, the latency on the, on the class driver isn't the best, but it's low enough to make it useful for uh, mixing and, and mastering stuff. Um, the, the round trip latency is in like the 40 millisecond range. That's definitely something you can feel. Um, but the good news is Steinberg, which is owned by Yamaha, uh, has been working on uh, its own drivers for its own interfaces. So meaning for this simple two in, two out interface, we're talking about like three to five milliseconds a piece uh, for round trip. Uh, that is fast enough that most people um, are not going to feel much of a difference. Low latency, kind of on par. If you want anything lower than that, you're talking about Thunderbolt uh, or PCI Express internal add-in cards in a desktop. Um, and this is what the vast majority of people are in rooms just like this one making music. Uh, so uh, what I want to demonstrate for you, first of all, is that the audio is moving as fast as Qualcomm claims. Uh, so I just strum through. Not so bad. Really, really solid. Really, really good. And actually, I'm using this mic and just, just to prove, you know, that this is all going, we will talk while we're playing. And you know, that's like the hardest thing on earth to do. I can't do that. At any rate, it um, your uh, latency is governed by the driver first and foremost. Uh, let's put that back. But also we're, uh, dealing with um, 
plugins. Now, since we're in a very early, now since we're in a very early stage with VST, uh, VST plugins for ARM, right now we're basically limited to what's available in Cubase. Uh, there is a, as you can hear, a very simple uh, guitar amp simulator. There's, but there's also a whole lot more. There's reverb. There's delay. Uh, uh, Cubase also includes uh, several uh, uh, virtual instruments where you would plug a USB MIDI keyboard up or, or a, a MIDI interface, plug that into the computer and then send data from your key presses or a drum kit or pads or anything else. And then that is those signals are run through a virtual instrument to produce music. Uh, and there's uh, Halion is the biggest one that Cubase has, uh, the most uh, the be most well known like sampler. But there are analog. There's an analog synth. There's uh, some other uh, some other instruments, a virtual drummer, and so on, um, that are available as part of Cubase. All of those are natively ARM on ARM laptops now. Uh, this is a preview, so you're using the preview version of Cubase. The preview is Cubase 13. Uh, 14 came out recently, so you're uh, still looking at something that's not quite up to date, but Steinberg is working to get that uh, caught up. All right, so we've gone kind of low tech here. I'm just pointing the camera at the screen. The room is gonna pick up the speakers, and you can hear that. I've got a nice little bass picked out a nice drum loop. I uh, just want to demonstrate that the ASIO driver uh, does exactly what it's supposed to do. And the only way I, that the best way to do that that I can think of is to just put the camera in the room and uh, watch it go. So I'm going to start recording in Cubase and we will record. good enough that's a, a pretty solid demonstration that as we start to add things processing load is going to be higher of course but just laying down some tracks with some virtual instruments works really nicely okay so you heard that that wasn't a perfect take i don't care it's actually better uh <laughs> that i made mistakes as i recorded that bass line so that you know this is like a real human being making uh things happen so anyway i'm going to turn it over to pj uh, P.J. Jacobowitz, when he was on the uh, Two and a Half Geeks podcast with Marco and Dave not too long ago, let him talk about the how this driver is actually making life better for everybody. You know, that's actually uh, the next topic we were going to go to was the uh, ASIO driver. Um, and what folks probably don't realize, and this is an interesting story, you and I, had a couple of cold ones and talked this over while we were out at yeah. Snapdragon Summit. And um, yeah. what they don't realize is that this was a big problem on Windows laptops historically, where you would plug something in to, you know, an instrument in, and, and the latency was such that it was basically unusable. You, you just couldn't rely on it. And, and frankly, I hate to say the dirty word, but that's, what Max did well was they had that one stupid part that, well, they do content creation well, and they had that nailed down. It was always very low latency, you know, seamless, all that good stuff. Windows wasn't, wasn't the issue. And it was a problem that Microsoft and frankly, Intel and AMD and any, anybody that's involved in the Windows ecosystem never really got around to fixing, you know, and it really was got around to fixing because why don't you tell the story how this came to be, how this new driver came that enabled this in 
basically for all Windows machines now eventually, right? 100%. X86 x86 should thank us. And we're happy, we're happy to fix this. Um, (laughs) But, um, but Pete Brown at Windows, huge credit goes to him and Yamaha, which I'll get to and I'll explain what happened. So um, yes, here, here's the whole story. And going back to your earlier question, you're like, hey, what's it like doing you know, marketing at Qualcomm and working with there? This was an example of us going to engineering um, in the marketing side. And we we're like, hey guys, what is the story with this? And how can we get it working? And, and, and they were like, hey, that's a good idea. Let's talk about it. So to your point, um, um, in Windows, um, if you were to get a, a, a DAW app, a digital audio workstation, these are um, basically... It's like a, the, the flip side of video editing. It's apps that are just for audio editing. And they kind of, and I think they do two things. They allow you to edit audio. Additionally, they have this whole world built into them that allows you to, um, they've replicated uh, musical equipment like guitar amps, guitar effects, pedals, um, keyboards, drums, all of these instruments and effects for them have been digitally recreated in these DAW apps. And if you, um, if you get what's called, oh, I meant to bring it here. Uh, it's, a, it's what's called a USB interface. All it does is uh, allow you to plug your analog instrument into a box that converts it into a USB cable. That's it. And so they've existed on the x86 side of Windows forever. However, Microsoft never had a generic driver for them. So um, on Snapdragon, there's tons of generic drivers. So for webcams, um, keyboards, mice, microphones. So if you plug them in into a Snapdragon Windows laptop or an x86 one, they're just going to work. But for these USB audio interface uh, devices, uh, they require an audio stream input output. That's what ASIO stands for. Um, and so they require this ASIO driver. Microsoft never created a um, ASIO driver f- uh, for these devices. To their credit, it's frankly because Windows is such a big operating system. There's so many devices out there that people have created um, and, and apps and, and devices they built for them. They can't be expected to build a driver for everything and every peripheral out there. But we're decades later, and these um, these USB devices are super popular, and they're now how most, you know, I can't speak for the whole industry, but tons of people create music on Windows laptops now. I don't know if they ever envisioned a future in which, you know, in a recording studio, you go in and you plug into a laptop, and that's how you create your tone. Thank you. <laughs> exactly. Ex- yeah. This is it. So this is the Steinberg IXO 2022. 20, uh, and you that's exactly how you plug into it. Just plug your um, guitar right into that um, top input. And in the back, you plug the USB cable into your computer and you could sound like Jimi Hendrix or Van Halen or Angus Young of ACDC. Or if you, you know, play piano, there's tons of digital pianos. Or if you have an electronic drum, drum kit, you can simulate all sorts of different drums. So we called up Microsoft and we were like, hey, um, we know you don't create a driver for this. Who, who should we talk to that would be interested? Which company would be interested in creating a driver that would be native for Snapdragon? Would it be Steinberg, Focusrite, Presonos? There's, there's tons of guys out there. And we were fortunate enough to meet with um, Pete Brown, who's principal audio engineer at Microsoft. And he's like, guys, you know what? I've always wanted to create uh, a generic driver for windows so that anyone can plug one of these devices in and it will just work and then they can install any daw app and these devices will just work um if you guys would you guys be willing to work with us on this and and dedicate engineering resources and we you know in marketing we were like guys uh engineering you got to do this that look at this whole ecosystem that could be enabled um and you know the engineering was like Let's do it. And Microsoft said to us, they go, okay, uh, there we go. Look at this, dude. And so- <laughs> I'm just playing the video. <laughs> I love it. I love it. So this is this is cute. This is it. So 
uh, Microsoft said to us, they're like, guys, we got to bring Yamaha into this. And I'm like, what does Yamaha have to do with this? And they're like, Yamaha is the largest creator of electronic instruments. They are the masters in this domain. They can help us write a kick butt driver for this. And we're like, okay. So Dave, to your point, um, I mean, these guys turned around a driver uh, that the latency, that's the amount of time when you hit the strings on your guitar to which the effects are applied and then they come through your speakers. They got it down to four milliseconds, which is crazy. Um, and then we brought in uh, Cubase, who's one of the legends in um, digital audio workstations. Um, Hans Zimmer, who is the gold standard now for creating um, scores in uh, exactly all these, all these tracks or recording all these instruments. Hans Zimmer is the master scorer now. He does all of uh, Christopher Nolan's movies. He's a Cubase user. And so these guys are like, hey, we want in on the party. We want to um, make our software native on Snapdragon. And so we all joined forces. And at Snapdragon Summit, we unveiled the ASIO driver, which is coming to the um, Windows Insider program soon. Um, but we demoed it at Snapdragon Summit. Um, Steinberg's uh, also took the initiative. They took that driver and they've uh, customized it a little bit for their Steinberg I, um, audio interfaces. So if you go to um, Cubase to their website right now, you can download the preview of Cubase on Snapdragon and it includes uh, their ASIO driver, which is compatible with a lot of devices. And you can, um, uh, Dave, I believe you and your team are out uh, testing it and trying it out right now. And you know what? Uh, with that, I've Ranted, uh, is there anything that I missed out and you want me to, to uh, answer on this story? I think that was, that was basically the story, but Pete Brown enabled all this. Oh, well, actually, let me say this. Cubase was the first. We owe those guys everything. We're going to continue to work with them. They have more announcements coming about Snapdragons. Everybody stay tuned. Uh, in the next few months, they're going to have some announcements about some continued work on Snap Snapdragon. Additionally, Reaper, another DAW is available right now for preview on ARM. Reason from Reason Studios. Um, uh, Martinic, uh, a company that makes uh, plugins for uh, these DAWs. These, that's a plugin is a, um, a third party virtual instrument. So there's a big market and people are like, hey, I've digitally recreated this keyboard or this guitar amplifier. They've created, um, even though it doesn't have to be a native what's called VST file plugin, they created, they're, they're like, hey, we want to have some fun and create a native one so it works, gets maximum performance out of the Orion CPU and Snapdragon. Uh, they've released a uh, native version and we've got, uh, stay tuned, we've, we're going to have a lot of things to say in the beginning of the year. Yeah, I was going to say mm, Pro Tools maybe? <laughs> uh, you know what? So we will, we stay tuned, stay tuned. Okay. okay. All right, so that should wrap it up. Um, I've been Ben. You've been awesome. This has been uh, a really uh, fun experience uh, that Qualcomm and Steinberg put together for us to be able to experience uh, DAWs, DAW technology on Windows on ARM. Uh, you've been great. So thanks for watching Hot Hardware.